Ladies and gentlemen, fasten your seatbelts as you're about to see a world that is all around you and yet so small that you probably have never seen it before. What is this world? It is the world inside your body and inside the bodies of all living things, it is the world of the cell. Inside the cell are tiny organs called organelles. The word organelle is a big word that means small organ. These organelles function to provide for the needs of the cell. They work to bring in food supplies, get rid of waste, protect the cell, repair the cell, and help it grow and reproduce. The first cell structure we will explore is a cell wall, found only in plant cells. The cell wall provides the cell with additional strength. Cell walls are thick walls built around the cell. These walls are made from cellulose. In order for a cell to remain healthy, the cell needs to be able to bring in food and get rid of waste. Look closely at this picture. You will notice that the cell membrane has small openings or doorways. These openings allow the cell to move materials in and out of the cell. As you travel through the cell membrane and enter the cell, you will find yourself floating in a kind of jelly. This jelly that fills the inside of a cell is called cytoplasm. Cytoplasm helps hold the cell's organelles in place. Cytoplasm also gives the cell structure. Think of a balloon, for example. An empty balloon does not have much structure. However, if you fill it with something, like water, it begins to take shape. Cytoplasm also helps the cell move proteins, chromosomes, and other materials, including cell organelles around the cell. Now look closely. Do you see the cytoplasm? It is the pink area. How do you travel from home to school? Do you take a road or sidewalk? Roads and sidewalks give people a path to follow as we move about our cities. A cell also has a system of tiny roads. These roads are actually tubes called the endoplasmic reticulum. These clear tubes travel throughout all parts of the cell. Some go from the nuclear membrane to the outside cellular membrane. Others travel to different organelles. Throughout the cell, the endoplasmic reticulum carries materials where they need to go. Whenever you hear the word endoplasmic reticulum, just think, cellular highway. So climb aboard the endoplasmic reticulum as we prepare to travel and explore the rest of the cell. As you travel along the endoplasmic reticulum, you will notice that stuck to the side of this tube are several small balls called ribosomes. Ribosomes use available materials to build proteins. These proteins can then be used with the cell for other purposes, such as to build new structures, repair damage, and direct chemical reactions. So why do you think ribosomes are found on the walls of endoplasmic reticulum? Think about it. Remember the endoplasmic reticulum is the cell's transportational system? When a ribosome is done building a protein, it can release it directly into the endoplasmatic reticulum, where it can then be transferred to wherever it is needed. Not all ribosomes end up attached to the inside of the endoplasmic reticulum. Many simply float around in the cytoplasm. Ribosomes are created in the nucleolus, which is found inside the cell's nucleus. The Golgi apparatus is a set of flattened, membrane-bound sacs. Cell products enter one side of the Golgi apparatus, which modifies, sorts, and packages them for distribution. Vesicles that contain newly made proteins move through the cytoplasm from the ER to the Golgi apparatus. The vesicle membrane fuses with the Golgi membrane. Inside the Golgi apparatus, enzymes modify the proteins as they move through the organelle. On the other side, the finished proteins are enclosed in new vesicles that bud from the surface of the Golgi apparatus. Many of these vesicles then migrate to the cell membrane. As the vesicle membrane fuses with the cell membrane, the completed proteins are released to the outside of the cell. Now here we are in lysosomes. They contain hydrolytic enzymes necessary for intracellular digestion. They are common in animal cells, but rare in plant cells. 
hydrolytic enzymes of plant cells are more often found in the vacuole. Lysosomes recycle worn out products. So here's a picture of lysosomes. Vacuoles are small sacs are filled with food and water. They are used by cells as storage tanks. All plant cells have vacuoles, but not all animal cells do. The primary place where plants store water is within its vacuoles. When a plant's vacuoles are filled with water, they become plump, giving the plant strength. What happens when you do not water a plant? It begins to wilt, right? Becoming softer. That is because the vacuoles found inside the plant cells are running out of water. Mitochondria provide the energy a cell needs to move, divide, produce products, contract. In short, they are the power centers of the cell. They are about the size of bacteria but may have different shapes depending on the cell type. Mitochondria are membrane-bound organelles and like the nucleus have a double membrane. The outer membrane is fairly smooth. But the inner membrane is highly complex, forming folds as seen in the cross section above. The folds greatly increase the inner membrane's surface area. It is on these folds that food is combined with oxygen to produce ATP, the primary energy source for the cell. Now before we get to the next topic about how cells divide, let's have a quick preview about the parts of the cell. Nucleus uses DNA to regulate cell activities, cell membrane, the outer structure, nuclear membrane allows certain materials to pass in and out, cytoplasm, the cell's environment, ribosomes make proteins for the cell, lysosomes recycle worn out products, Golgi apparatus pack and carry proteins, endoplasmic reticulum a place for cell reactions, Mitochondria produces energy for the cell. How do cells divide? What would happen if you cut a frog in half? Would you have two live frogs? Depending on where you cut, each half would be the missing important pieces that keep the frog alive. Likewise, when a cell divides, it is important that each new cell get all the pieces. Otherwise, instead of two working cells, you would only have two halves each missing important parts. As a cell prepares to divide, it must first replicate of all its important parts so that both of the new cells have everything they need. The most important organelle is the brain, or nucleus. Through a complex process, the nucleus splits in two, making two identical copies. After the cell's important parts are duplicated, the cell divides down the middle, forming a separate outside membrane for each of the new daughter cells. In time, each of these two new cells will also divide, which will all in turn divide again. By constantly dividing, a life form can grow, while their cells remain the same size. Whose cells are bigger? A newborn infant's or that baby's parents? You might think that the parents have larger cells because their bodies are bigger. But the truth is that both the infant and its parents have cells that are pretty much the same size. However, the parents have a lot more cells. As you grow, your cells do not get bigger. Instead, they divide, creating new cells. The larger you grow, the more cells you have. Why don't cells grow very large? The answer to that question lies in the cell's outer membrane. The job of the membrane is to protect the cell from outside danger, while allowing food to enter through openings and waste to exit. If a cell were to grow too large, the cellular membrane could not keep up with it. It would not be able to get enough food in, nor would it able to get all the waste out. As a cell grows, one of two things must happen. It must either divide, forming two new cells, or it must die. Now this is where we end our journey as we discovered the parts of the cell. Thank you for watching and God bless.